Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, where we don't need kryptonite to bring Superman to his knees. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. You've been playing some poker, Nick? Yeah, a little bit. Um, played on Saturday night the, each of the last couple weekends. Uh, two weekends ago I won $220, and this last weekend I lost $200, so net profit of $20, not, not too bad. <laughs> Um, last weekend I went over to a friend of mine's place in, uh, I guess Citrus Heights slash Granite Bay, kind of on that border there. Um, didn't do so well. Uh, I was playing with a bunch of guys who had a, a lot more money than I do. Don't really care about money as much as I do. Uh, so je it's the same group of guys that I always play with. So I, I always kind of play the same way, just very tight, uh, wait for good hands, and usually they, they'll pay me off when I actually do get a good hand. Uh, the couple hand I bought for, first, I bought in for a hundred dollars. I what kind of went back and forth for a while, uh, hovering right around a hundred dollars. Um, what happened was I was up around, I had around 60, 70 bucks left. Um, dude who I'm really familiar with who actually probably plays tighter than I do, uh, raised under the gun pre flop, and I had ace king probably like one or two away from the button, so I just uh, flatted. I had about 55, 60 bucks left in my stack after that point. The flop came six, king six deuce. Uh, There's a bunch of other people who called also. So I have top pair, to, uh, top kicker, ace king, uh, pair of kings with an ace kicker. Um, the original Razor bets a pretty good amount. Uh, I think it was probably like 20 bucks or so because there were a few people in the pot. Like I said, I only had like uh, 60 bucks left, so I went ahead and shipped it in. Uh, the, the weird thing was that another guy actually called. It was a guy that was in the small blind. He called. And then the original rage of this tight guy that I was telling you about, he ca he calls really quick too. So what he ends up having is pocket sixes. He flops a set. Like I said, the, the, the flop was king six deuce. And the other guy who called actually outflopped me also. He had six deuce. Wow. That, that, that's how loose these guys play. He called with six deuce in the in the small blind. Wow. He flopped two pair. Unfortunate for him, he flopped two pair and he still lost. Uh, I I almost caught up though on the turn. I caught I catched a I caught a flush draw and then and then I missed on the river. But so that was my first hundred dollars. Uh, so I went ahead and bought in for another hundred dollars, figuring if I'm able to make that back, then I'll be golden. If not, then you know I won two hundred bucks the previous week. Who cares? Um, again, just kind of going up and down, uh, right around $100. Uh, I have about $100 in my stack at a point when I have uh, pocket queens. So I am in early position. I raise. Uh, again, the same tight guy, this, the guy who flopped the uh, set of sixes against my ace king. He re-raises re me pre-flop to about 20 bucks or so. Like I said, I about have about eighty bucks or excuse me, hundred bucks in my stack. So I go ahead and just smooth call him, hoping not to see an ace or a king on the flop. Figuring he he must have ace king, aces or or kings. In which case, ace king is good for him to have. If he has aces or kings, then I'm in really bad shape with my pocket queens. Uh, so I went ahead and smooth called him, and it was just me and him going to the flop. Uh, we both had twenty bucks in there each, so pot size about forty bucks, and I have about eighty bucks left. Uh, the flop was like. Five, six, eight with uh, two clubs. So there's a lot of hands that a lot of people that that flop could hit. Um, any sort of like a pair, obviously five, sixes, or eights uh, without flop queens. That would be his set. Um, if he had like ace king of clubs or something like that, he would have two over cards, the ace and the king, that would uh, beat my queens if, if an ace or a king hit. And also he would have picked up a flush draw. So there's a lot of things that he could have had that weren't necessarily aces or kings so basically he he let out he bet 20 bucks into a 40 dollar pot as i said i had about 80 bucks left so i went ahead and shipped it in figuring my hand was probably good turned out not to be good uh the really tight guy did end up having aces i didn't catch a queen so i lost that other 100 bucks i was like all right well this guy's just catching every card on me so i'm just gonna give up so that was the end of that but um tomorrow night actually i'm going to reno for uh my uh Sixth anniversary, 2008 to 2014. That'd be six years, yes. Uh, and I'm going to go uh, play some more online poker. So hopefully, I'll have more positive tales next time. Can I come? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you can stay in the bathtub or something. Oh man! <laughs> Don't you get guys get two beds? No. <laughs> get, 
bring some air back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to be playing all online poker all night. Let's go watch TV and then fall asleep. I thought that was after he lays her out. He's gonna play. <laughs> no, all this is different plans since I'm coming now. <laughs> 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 next time right? right there will definitely be a next time the the, the grand sierra keeps calling me free rooms i don't know why but they keep calling me free rooms so as long as they keep doing that i'll go so that was my poker adventures last week a fail <laughs> you'll get them next time i'm sure i will you, you just need to use your special power where you could look at everyone's hand that would help i try not to use that though like it's to... frowned upon yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, got some treasure? Yeah, how about you? Yeah, I do too. Now, I think there should be a stipulation to the uh, loser for the treasure hunting. Okay. Only if you don't bring anything to the table could the other person pick your treasure. Your, uh... Punishment? Yeah, punishment. Oh, okay, that's fine. We could do that. So, okay. previous podcast, uh, the winner of the treasure hunting got to pick the punishment and the prize. You, you roll three, uh, 20 sided die three times. And whoever just won got to pick whatever they wanted. So I feel like you're getting picked on. Yeah. So I'll let you pick your punishment. Tight. Or whoever loses. We don't know who's going to lose. Yeah. But judging from the amount you paid for the treasure yesterday, I think I'm going to lose. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's my first item. Oh, you have more than one item? Yeah, two. Oh, that's tight. Uh, this was picked up at um, the uh, not the five and dime. There's another thrift store on Folsom. It just opened by the uh, Goodwill. Yeah, I got it for six dollars. <laughs> Rogue Galaxy. Yeah, that game's heck of fun. That's I, tight. Yeah, I actually have it. So um, I guess I'll do my other item now. Yeah. I found it at Dimple. Thought it was complete. But it's missing the instruction booklet. They always are. Yeah, uh, I got it for fourteen ninety nine. Oh, Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. With Mega Man Zero in it. What? I don't see that. <laughs> oh, I must have, no. I must have put it in there when I was looking for my um, other games. When Jamila had me cleaning out the garage. All right. So I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. It's going to take me a little bit to get it out. Oh man. It's a video game? Yeah. Oh, wow, that is cool. It has a golden thing and everything. The golden Wii Remote. It's the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Special Edition with the golden Wii Remote and the game complete with the music CD and the instruction booklet and the game. Wow. I remember this was a hot commodity. Yeah. Cool. So the clear winner of this week is Brad. So let me go ahead and bring up the, the prize will chart. Would you like to roll first or do you want me to? Uh, you can. Thirteen and nine. Nine. I'm going to have to go for the icicle. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen. Pressure point. Thirteen. Hit. Cook dinner for me. Eleven. Take me out to dinner. Oh, you can't go out to dinner, huh? You're doing that thirty day challenge. I'll cook you dinner. Okay. So get on over here. <laughs> Top five. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Man, my legs had to hurt too. <laughs> Can you pull your sweatpants up, shark sure can? Oh, up, oh, yeah. There you go. Do you have underwear on? No. I just need to make sure I know where to... <laughs> you missed. <laughs> Why would you tell him that? Tell him you missed. You missed no. again. <laughs> you missed that time. <laughs> I don't want to say you missed again because you were going to hit harder. <laughs> Did I get the tip the second time? <laughs> no, you didn't get anything the second time. No. You should have just pulled him down. I would have got a direct hit. I bet you would have. <laughs> oh. That's going to be a creeper. <laughs> so we're doing a special uh, top five this week because it is episode 37. 
most of our listeners know, 37 is equivalent to Kevin Smith movies. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're doing top five Kevin Smith characters and top five Kevin Smith quotes or um, lines from a scene. We didn't limit it to uh, one line. We were able to include as many lines as you want. So we'll go ahead and start with characters. I'm fine with characters. How about you, Nick? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you could roll to see who starts. All right. Ooh, like 20, 18, 18, 16. Nick thought critical? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My number five is Olaf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very small part. He probably gets about two minutes of screen time in the original Clerks movie. Uh, he's introduced by Jay as uh, Silent Bob's co- cousin who's visiting from Russia. Uh, he's the singer for a metal band in Russia, and they, their hit single is Berserker. Although it's not really called the hit single, it's just I like to call it that because it's awesome. Uh, and of course, the lyrics to Berserker are amazing. They might <laughs> yeah. make uh, an appearance in my other top five. Oh man! For Spoiler. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Olaf. Uh, number five on my list uh, comes from the movie Dogma, and that's the Metatron nice. played by Al Rickman. Yes. Such a great character. Did you uh, call him Al Rickman? Alan. Oh, I thought you called him Al. I, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did say Al Rickman. Uh, it's, I'm just used to, um, like, on the podcast and stuff, they always say Al Rickman. So, oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Al. So uh, he plays the voice of God, played, played by Alanis Morissette, for the last, I don't know, minute of the movie. Uh He's just uh, extremely funny in a dry sense of way. Uh, and, I mean, Alan Rickman in a Kevin Smith movie, you've got to put him on a spot somewhere. So my uh, other, my fifth one is going to be a small part as well. It's going to be Shaka Luker King. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that again. Shaka Luther King. <laughs> played by Chris Rock in <laughs> Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> He's the director of Blood Man and Chronic. <laughs> he has a poor outlook on white people, calling us all crackers. <laughs> Cracker. <laughs> uh, when when the, his assistant, played by J- Jamie Kennedy, came back to him with a cup of coffee, he ordered him to go get a cup of coffee. He, he said something like, "Cracker, go me, give me a cup of coffee." And then so he he Jamie Kennedy brings back the cup of coffee and he says, "You went to film school, didn't you?" Must piss you off to see a black man running a big old production <laughs> like this, huh? Went to film school. Does your daddy know you give a nigga his coffee? <laughs> Must kill him, doesn't it? Doesn't he say, uh, isn't there boogers in this coffee? Yeah. It was booger free, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and when Jay and Silent Bob start, uh, the, there's cops and guns at the end of the movie shooting out. And he goes, crazy crackers with guns? It's time I get my black ass out of here. <laughs> So that, that's my number five. Uh, my number four is from Mallrats. It's uh, Jason Lee's character, Brody Bruce. Uh, Br- Brody is basically just a super slacker. He is the very definition of a mall rat. He's a comic book nerd. Um, the only knock on him is that he's playing a Sega console at the very beginning of the movie. But at least he's playing a good game. He's playing NHL 94. Yeah. So props to him for that. But st- play Nintendo. Come on. Yeah. Uh, so at the beginning of the movie, uh, his girlfriend dumps him, and then she eventually, I think she has an affair through, uh, with Ben Affleck, doesn't she? Uh, Holden or whatever his name she is? She starts dating him, but I don't know if she sleeps with him or not. Okay. Holden but, McNeil. Yeah, but by the end of the movie, um, he gets her back, and, um, Brody gets his vengeance on Holden, so. He's a very funny character, he's just very laid back, he has a really cool outlook on life, um, so that's my number four is Brody. Number four on my list is Brody as well, Brody <laughs> Bruce. That's my number four too. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, he's the uh, from apart from what you said, he is the uh, inspired by Walt Flanagan. Uh, he, they would drive around to comic book uh, conventions, uh, get comics, and you know the uh, the cup of soda that he keeps getting refilled. Uh, he said that Walt once made a Dixie cup of Pepsi last a whole eight hour trip. <laughs> <laughs> so he decided to put that in the movie. And I think it's funny how Brody says, 
that guy runs faster than Walt Flanagan's dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brody Bruce, his name is made up of the main character from Jaws and the nickname of the shark, Jaws, was Bruce. Uh, I put he's unemployed, comic book obsessed, uh, living with his parents, lacking in motivation and maturity. And that's why Kevin Smith deemed him based off of Walt Flanagan. They have the same characteristic traits. So that was my number four. Uh, my number three is another Jason Lee character. It's uh, Banky Edwards from Chasing Amy. Uh, they're kind of similar characters, but to me, I thought Jace Chasing Amy was a much better movie than Mallrats, so I put him up higher. Um, also, Banky Edwards was actually employed. He actually had some talent. He was a comic book artist. Well, inker. He's, a, a, he's an inker. <laughs> and Stan, Mo or Stan Mosier, Scott, Scott Mosier calls him a tracer. That, that's a pretty funny scene. Uh, when they're when he's signing autographs for the fans and Scott Mosier's character calls him a trace and they get in, they have some fisticuffs that's pretty funny. I mean, if you're familiar with the the plot for uh, Chasing Amy, it's about this guy who falls in love with this girl named Melissa, who uh, is a lesbian, and that's where all the drama happens with uh, bank between Banky and um, oh, I think we met, mixed up Holden because Holden is the guy from Chasing Amy. Yeah, Holden is. So I don't know what Ben Affleck's character's name. Oh, Shannon. Oh, Shannon's right. the uh, Ben Affleck's character in uh, Moy Rats. Holden's his character in uh, Chasing Amy. That's what it is. Uh, so uh, Holden and Banky work together on this uh, comic book called uh, Blunt Man and Chronic. Uh, they're working together. Uh, this this Alyssa girl kind of starts breaking them up because uh, Holden's character falls in love with with her, and uh, Banky is, is really pissed off because he knows that he has no chance with her given that she's a lesbian. Uh, of course, as the movie progresses, she decides that she is willing to change for him, which I don't know if that's necessarily realistic, but that's what happens in the movie. Uh, so it all kind of spawns from there. Um, so that's my number three is uh, Banky Edwards from Chasing Amy. Uh, do you remember that scene when they're discussing mm -hmm. sex and, he's, and she introduces him to fisting yeah <laughs> and do you remember uh have you heard of the outtake that Affleck does that Kevin mm -hmm. was like you can't say that because uh -uh. uh, she says it's reserved for special occasions and he says what do you do for not so special occasions hit her in the head with a baseball bat <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Smith got pretty upset <laughs> yeah he didn't like him ad living yeah <laughs> uh, number three on my list hills from clerks to and it's Elias <laughs> nice. Uh, he's uh, quite a character study. Uh, you get to see his progression throughout the whole film, being this innocent, sweet, 19-year-old boy who still kisses his mom on the cheek <laughs> goodbye <laughs> from the car to just being so debaucherous in the end with a few drinks in him. <laughs> debaucherous. <laughs> he, uh, <clears throat> he's very uh, knowledgeable about the Internet, but very naive at the same time. The whole pillow pants scene. <laughs> pillow pants. <laughs> uh, he's just a great character, and he's easily scared by the uh, evil forces, especially uh, King Diamond songs. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is great when uh, Jay just pops out of the window and starts singing the uh, Welcome Home song. Through the drive through window? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number three is going to be Dante Hicks from Clerks and Clerks 2. Brian O'Halloran. And uh, he works at the quick, quick Stop, and he lives with his parents. He feels that because he runs a store, he is independent and is in control of his life. But he's a total pushover, like when his boss calls him in. He comes in, no questions asked, doesn't have any sense of uh, backbone or spine. He has a girlfriend, a long-term relationship with this girl named Veronica. And his ex comes to town who's cheated on him, just wants to go back with her just because she shows up pretty spineless um but he does have a lot of cool lines and i put him at my number three uh my number two is from the movie dogma it's a ben affleck's character named bartleby uh mainly like this character <clears throat> because he was a uh, god's opponent and i i feel like i'm god's opponent no i, I really don't feel like god, i'm god's opponent because i don't believe in god so that would not make sense but he's the the bad guy in the movie he does a really good job of being the bad guy uh, so what the story of Dogma is that Bartleby and Loki are these angels who have been banished from heaven by God after uh, Loki resigns as the angel of death. Uh, supposedly he and Bartleby were drinking one night and Bartleby convinced Loki that he shouldn't be killing people in the name of God anymore. And uh, Loki resigned. I, apparently he flipped him off in the pro or flipped it off, flipped God <laughs> off 
in the process. So they are uh, banished to Earth, and um, the whole the the whole plot line of the movie is them trying to get to this church in New Jersey to, for their sins to be forgiven. And once their sins are forgiven, they will get back to heaven. But in turn, that will overrule the word of God, which would basically wipe everything out of existence. Uh, during the course of the movie, the uh, the fallen angel Loki, uh, who is played by um, Matt Damon, has a change of heart. He realizes that you know his doing this would erase all of existence. So he shouldn't do this, but Bartleby does not change his course. He just wants to get back home. He basically hates the the human race. So uh, I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so that's my number two is Bartleby from uh, Dogma. Uh, number two for me is Jay and Silent Bob. You can't have one without the other. Uh, I mean, they made a complete movie. O- uh, with just them two as the main characters, and it's hilarious. They were introduced in Clerks, appeared in every Kevin Smith movie, made uh, an appearance in Scream 3, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, just them two together is just pure magic, no matter where you put them. That's my number two. So I put them as my number one, and I'm probably going to take your number one right now. <laughs> My number two is going to have to be Randall Graves. That's my number yeah, one. that's my number one also. <laughs> uh, it's a prime example of a typical slacker. He works in a dead-end job, has no respect for customers, and arrives late to work every day. Uh, he closes a shop that he works at, RSD <laughs> Video, to go chat with Dante. Uh, and He also closes it to go rent movies from other <laughs> video stores, which I think is hilarious. The hermaphrodite movie. <laughs> And my favorite quote of his of all time, and he's not even on screen for it, is when Veronica comes back and you hear 37 from (laughs) the side of that. (laughs) From out of nowhere. It's hilarious. He's also, I I think he's the one responsible for the donkey show in Clerks 2, right? He he puts that on because it's like Dante's going away present. Mm -hmm. Got to give him props for that also. And for trying to bring back Porch Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of great scenes with Randall. Um, the All the conversations that he and El- Elias have in uh, Clerks 2, uh, they're, they're just hilarious. Uh, Randall Graves is hands down my favorite uh, Kevin Smith character, for sure. Yeah, he's... Um, that. I think my favorite scene in any Kevin Smith movie is the final scene in Clerks 2 when they... Just that whole jail scene... Of him going back and forth, Dante, and then it even has Jay and Silent Bob like in the corner when he's like, "Cover your ears," and he's getting all sentimental, and he's like, "I love you," in a totally heterosexual way, and you hear Jay say, "Yeah, right." <laughs> <laughs> so they still have that comedy in there to uh, to break up the um, the tension, but that's just my favorite scene. Nice. I wanted to put it on my on my quotes, but it was like a fifteen minute scene, so I would, <laughs> it wasn't making it. Any HMs? Oh man, um, I don't have any. I, I mean, Jay and Silent Bob would be an HM because they weren't on my top five, but you guys mentioned them already. I put Cancer Merchant. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have uh, Fanboy, of course. Shout out to Flanagan. Did you want to say anything else about Jay and Silent Bob? Um. I put down that I, I think it's hilarious that they're like the yin and yang of each other. It's not involved all quiet. Uh, Jay's very crude, uh, treats women with disrespect, very cruel to people, <laughs> constantly horny, and he's always trying to seduce women. Seduce. <laughs> like on Clerks, when the two women walk by, he goes, what's up, ladies? <laughs> 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 Like, in case they don't turn around for ladies, they turn around for sluts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go top five quotes. Sure. Let's roll again. 18. Ooh. 13. Oh, roll off. You got 18, too? Yep. 16. 19. No one's gotten single digits yet. Someone <laughs> rolled a 9, I think, the first time around, right? Yeah. So. I'm going. Uh, so my number 5 uh, comes from Dogma from Azrael. He says, No pleasure, no rapture, no exquisite sin greater than central error. 
And I just related to that when I when I saw it on DVD, uh, when I was at home in my apartment when I first got my loft apartment, <laughs> and that AC was just blowing on me. Oh, yeah. It was that summertime, and that that apartment got to like sixty degrees if I let it. <laughs> That's all the time. And it would, and it only cost me like in the summertime. I paid like thirty bucks a month for nice. for electricity, but now in a house we pay like between sixty and eighty, but still. That um, central air is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time we go to hotel rooms, we yeah. just lower that shit yeah. all the way. Aaron was tortured when we went to Vegas with him. He kept turning it up. I know he did. We kept turning it down, though. <laughs> it hella tight. Uh, so my number five is going to be from Chasing Amy. It's between a conversation between Jay and Holden. Uh, they're sitting there, and Jay's like, so why the long face, horse? Banky on the rag? <laughs> <laughs> and then Holden goes, I'm just, uh, I'm having a little girl trouble. Jay goes, bitch is pressing charges. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's at the end when they're in the, yeah, because they only come up in the end, right? Yeah. yeah. My number five is from Randall Graves. Uh, he's standing outside the store. I think he just finished a, uh, conversation with, uh, Veronica. And as she's leaving, he says, Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. <laughs> and, and right after that, uh, one of the customers goes out to the parking lot following her and he says, Hey, you get back here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think Dante says that though. What? You, that, hey, um... you get back here. No, yeah, get get away from her or something, or get back here. Really? I think it's Dante. Uh, number four on my list comes from Mallrats when uh, uh, Brody and uh, what's the main character's name? Chan oh no, um, T S. Yeah, yeah. T S. Well, they want to uh, break up the whole uh, game show going on, uh -huh. so they're like, we we know two dudes that could do it, and you cut to Jay and Silent Bob playing with kittens. And, uh, the, you know, they're talking about it. Hey, we want you guys to bust this up. And then Jay says, shit, bitch, we're going to bust up that stage like a high school care. We're just going to outwit LaFour's X-Men style. When Brody says, should I just call you Logan Weapon X? And Jay says, no, Wolverine, snickety, snick, snoink. And then Brody says, see, what he's doing is imitating Wolverine's berserker attack with his adamantium claws. <laughs> and T.S. goes, I never would have guessed. And I just feel that way sometimes when talking to Jamila, like how when I try to explain something to her in detail, she's just completely clueless. Yeah. <laughs> when I uh, try to go into like different uh, games or like what was that YouTube video on Tosh.0 when the guy was oh, like, dude. "What's a better sword, Excalibur or, or the, the Master, Master Sword from Legend of Zelda?" And you're like, well, uh, if we, the Master Sword and Excalibur were made for two equal purposes to, bane, to be the bane of evil, and then and <laughs> Tosh says, "Just pick one." <laughs> Because <laughs> he's going into this huge explanation. Number four is going to be said by Randall. Simple line. I don't know if you know this or not, but come leave streaks if you don't clean it up right away. <laughs> Jason Johnson would know all about that. Oh, man. <laughs> Remember when he was like, I like to wash myself in a mirror and just come on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number four is also from Clerks. Uh, it's a little bit of a dialogue between Dante Hicks and a random customer. It's right after the conversation that Dante has with uh, his girlfriend about how many dicks she sucked. So Dante says, 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. And the customer says, in a row? <laughs> That's it. That's my number one. <laughs> is it? Oh, okay. So uh, my next one comes from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, it's it involves Jay and Brent. I will be paying, playing the role of Brent. <laughs> this was on my honorable mention list, by the way. So uh, uh, Jay starts it off. Uh, he uh, him and Silent Bob meet up with uh, the Percy, uh, Missy, and Justice, and there's one other Issy. Yeah, and Brent, who's uh, who's all in the van and they're traveling to Colorado or something. And then they were going to go to Hollywood somewhere in the Midwest. So 
Jay's looking at this Brent character as his antagonist. He's the threat. Yeah, he's like cock blocking him. Yeah. So Jay gets this idea and he goes, So you're into this for the pussy, right? No. I'm in this because I love animals, stupid. Even sheep? Of course. Sheep are beautiful creatures. So would you fuck a sheep? What is your damage, little boy? <laughs> you have a swick and twisted world perspective. <laughs> no, you're misunderstanding me, Prince Valiant. I'm saying if you were a sheep, would you fuck a sheep if you were another sheep? Well, in that case, you bet your sweet ass I would. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, thought so. Yo, this motherfucker ain't one of us. He said he'd fuck a sheep. <laughs> and then he throws him out the van. Yeah. <laughs> He goes, you're, who's stupid now, dirty sheep fucker? <laughs> <laughs> My number three is going to be from Jam and Silent Bob Strike Back. It's uh, Holden McNeil. Uh, he's speaking about poopshoot.com. This is a site populated by militant movie buffs, sad, pathetic little bastards living in their parents' basement, downloading scripts, and what they think uh, is inside information about movies and actors, they claim to despise, yet can't stop discussing. And I feel like this is a whole big trend on the internet right now. Everybody being so negative, trash talking, and hasn't stopped. And I just found it hilarious. <laughs> uh, my number three is from Clerks. It's uh, between Randall Graves and uh, another random customer. Uh, the random customer comes up to the register and he notices a cat. He says, cute cat, what's its name? Randall Graves says, annoying customer. And the random customer who walks out of the store says, fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so number two on my list also comes from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Jay, of course, as Brad had mentioned, is extremely horny. And he, <laughs> and he just wants to whip it out right there in front of Justice. So uh, <clears throat> a devil angel comes and visits him. And basically, you know, it's egging him on to do it. And then, then the devil says, you know, about this time, the angel Jay would show up and try to talk you out of it. But I jumped his ass. <laughs> so the devil goes away and Jay starts to unzip. And then all of a sudden the angel Jay comes and says, tell you what, look over at Silent Bob and see if he thinks it's a good, good idea to whip your dick out. He looks over at Silent Bob, who is shaking his head like, no. <laughs> Jay puts it back and says, Angel Jay says, that's it. Put the, put the dick down. You got to go from the heart, yo. No little perv bullshit's going to work on for this one. Be smooth. Be Don Dead Della Nooch. Now I got to beat the shit out of those who, those punch suckers, little bitches. Remember, don't pour your dick out until she asks or until she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, he ends it with, bong. <laughs> yeah, because uh, she asked him what a trouser snake was. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what's a trouser snake? Number two is going to be from Clerks 2. Uh, it's said by the sexy stud, hey, fucko, it's not bestiality. It's interspecies erotica. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is a dialogue that Banky and Holden have. Uh, they're discussing... Uh, Holden's love for Alyssa. Banky, is, this is kind of long, so bear with me. So Banky says, all right, now see this? And he's, draw, he's drawing a little di diagram. This is a four-way road, okay? And dead in the center is a crisp new $100 bill. Now at the end of each of these streets are four people, okay? You following? Holden says, yeah. Good. Over here, we have a male affectionate, easy to get along with, non-political agenda lesbian. Down here, we have a man-hating, angry-as-fuck agenda of rage, Bitter Dyke. <laughs> Over here, we got Santa Claus, and up here, the Easter Bunny. Which one is going to get the $100 bill first? Holden says, what is this supposed to prove? Banky Edward says, no, I'm serious. This is a serious exercise. It's like an SAT question. Which one is going to get the $100 bill first? The male-friendly lesbian, the man-hating Dyke, Santa Claus, or the Easter Bunny? The man-hating Dyke. Good. Why? I don't know. Because the other three are figments of your fucking imagination. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Number one on my list comes from Clerks. And it is a uh, dialogue between, of course, Randall and a customer. <clears throat> and uh, basically, 
the customer uh, just tricked Randall into uh, not paying attention to him. She holds up a movie, says, is this movie any good? <laughs> and, then, and he goes, uh, I don't know, never watched it. And then she holds up the same movie, but says, how about this one? He's like, that movie sucked. <laughs> And then so she's like, uh, she's all proud that um, she outwitted him. <laughs> and then so Randall says, and I hope it feels good. And then she says, you hope what feels good? Randall says, I hope it feels so good to be right. There's nothing more exhilarating than pointing out the shortcomings of others, <laughs> is there? Well, this is the last time I rent here. Randall, of course, says, you'll be missed. <laughs> and she says, screw you. And, of course, that pisses Randall off. He runs away. Hey, you're not allowed to rent here anymore. <laughs> and then there's the, the, the and one by Jay. He goes, yeah. <laughs> doesn't he, doesn't he say something to her like, I don't appreciate your ruse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, my number one was the whole 37 dialogue. That's hilarious. <laughs> My love for you is like a truck berserker. <laughs> Would you like some making fuck berserker? My love for you is ticking clock berserker. Would you like to suck my cock berserker? That's my number one. Did he just say making fun? <laughs> That's when Rikaska said it too. <laughs> Olaf. You know, uh, Flanagan used to, he was an inspiration for Olaf. Uh -huh. he, he got the wig and turned it backwards and he pretended to be a Russian cousin. <laughs> and he would speak in uh, Russian and he, like in the movie, he'd say Skrullnik. <laughs> and they like, and he'd make up this language. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, all right, it's time for the Pepsi challenge. That's what I'm talking about. So I think it was 32 where we did our favorite drinks. Yeah. 30, yeah. And uh, there was a little bit of uh, drama between Brad and Brandon <laughs> over which was the superior drink, Pepsi or Coke. So I just decided to do a Pepsi challenge between the two of them to see which one was actually better. I didn't get any diet product because that stuff tastes like shit. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to, I think I might do one with, with ice and maybe one without ice okay. just because I think it tastes different uh, both ways. So I'm going to go into the other room real quick and uh, set up. Okay. Okay. So while Nick gets set up on the Pepsi challenge, we're going to introduce our contestants and talk with them a little bit. Our first contestant is my wife, Karen. Hello. So is there anything you want to say about yourself? <laughs> um no how she pulled a tim <laughs> uh, master interviewer at work <laughs> anything you want to say about yourself <laughs> uh so what's your favorite position <laughs> there we go the hard-hitting question we'll move right to it huh <laughs> i played the fifth <laughs> that's a good response it's it's doggy by the way <laughs> So if I gave you a cherry seed, a cherry, what would you do with the seed? Would you swallow it or spit it out? No comment on that one too, I guess. I'm here for a Pepsi challenge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Nick has got two cups with ice and a soda product. So uh, just go ahead and take a drink out of both and tell us which one you prefer. We're doing, is Karen going first? Yes. Okay, so this is the non-ice. Okay. Just sit and take a drink of each one and tell me which one you prefer. I know. That's probably Pepsi. <laughs> she made a gagging noise. I don't drink real soda, so it's sweet. Yeah, that's right. Real soda. <laughs> There's a reason it's called real soda. They're both gross. <laughs> <laughs> they both have Pepsi in them. It's a trick question. <laughs> no, I'm not that clever. If you had to pick one. They taste exactly the same to me. Inconclusive. Bl blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Would you like to try the ice to see if right. there's a difference? Okay. Because I think it's supposed to be had with ice. Another gagging noise. That's <laughs> probably Pepsi again. <laughs> All right. I think I like the left better. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Would you like iced or non-iced first? Iced is better. I'll do non-iced first. <laughs> I agree. Iced is much better. That's why I did two separate ones. I'm going to have to go with this one. A. 
right. You can hand those to me. I'll... All right, let's stop drinking the soda. <laughs> that is the same. No, I'm going to go with M. <laughs> Definitely N. <laughs> do you want me to wait till the kids do it to reveal the results? Um, you, you could re you could re reveal the results because then if they get it right, I'll give them a hug. What is, what does right mean? Yeah, Coke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was it was consistent. Brad likes Coca Cola products, and he got he got both of them right. Brandon likes Pepsi products, and he got both of them right. So and and Karen preferred the the Pepsi over the uh, suck my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Although she did, she seemed like she was kind of forced into a response more than anything. <laughs> so Pepsi two, Coke one. Yeah, pretty much. It's all that matters is I'm consistent. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm wondering is if you chose the one that you t recognized as Coke or the one that you actually recognized as being better. I, I think he kept drinking one to wait for that Coke taste. He did. <laughs> because he did take quite a few sips. Because he couldn't tell the difference. I just took one sip on each and did the one that I like the best. That's what I did too. And now you took like eight sips. <laughs> You're like, and can't be right. That can't be because I don't taste that nasty <laughs> Coke. Flavor. <laughs> I want to bring him over. Our next contestant, Logan. Had the okay. results. So Brad didn't sway him. I'm not going to sway him. So you just tell us which of these two drinks you prefer. Take a drink out of this. Take a drink out of this, and tell me tell me which one you like better. Well, I'd say they're the same. <laughs> Blasphemy. <laughs> Hearsay. <laughs> There's not one that you're leaning towards? Okay, try the ice. Take a bigger sip this time. <laughs> M, give me a hug. <laughs> okay, go get Jordan. <laughs> sweating it now, aren't you? Not at all. They're tasty <laughs> boy. His taste buds aren't developed. <laughs> <laughs> Our next contestant, Jordan. We have two ice drinks and two non-ice. Take a drink out of both and tell us which letter you like better. No, these two first. Okay, and this one. Z. And then. N. N. Okay. High five! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay, go get Sam. Guess you're going to be swallowing some cherry seeds tonight. <laughs> It doesn't matter because no. I like Coke. <laughs> uh -oh. Your taste buds are wrong. <laughs> and they're developed. Oh, man, you must have like a triple X chromosome in your tongue taste buds. <laughs> At least I like Fresca. Uh, that you, that you could... Like Diet Coke, though. No, I hate Diet Coke. <laughs> See how uh, hypocritical he is? <laughs> Three out of and my... you talk about consistency. Three out of my... Top drinks were Coke products. Yes, they were. Okay, Sam, come take a drink out of both of these and tell us which ones you prefer, A or Z. Uh, um, I prefer Z. And then this one. Why am I so funny? <laughs> it's not like you peed in one of the cups. <laughs> M. Uh, inconsistent results. So, so Sam chose Coke for the lukewarm product, or excuse me, Pepsi for the lukewarm product, but Pepsi or Coke for the iced product. So what's the final tally we got here? Uh, so looks like for the lukewarm products, there were three people who preferred Pepsi and one person, Brad, who preferred Coke. <laughs> and for the iced product, it was tied three to three, Coke to Pepsi. There so, we go. So we see uh, who had more results. <laughs> so as we see, lukewarm soda, can't really tell <laughs> who likes what, but the ice products, they're really the same. They're really the same? Yeah. There's three and three. I don't know about that. Negative. There's only one winner here, and that's Pepsi. And that's Coke. <laughs> Pepsi. You could go back to playing your game, Sam. You prefer Coke? Yes. What do you prefer, Jordan? 
Well, I prefer Coke. No, no, no. I'm saying like if without this test, like if someone were to offer you a Pepsi and a Coke, what which one would you take? Well, it depends what type of bottle. A glass bottle. Coke. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, your taste buds say otherwise. You said Pepsi. Well, Pepsi. There you go, Logan. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. We had a great challenge. Mm, I'm not sure if I uh, can deduct anything with these results. I'll have to try again. I think the only thing you can conclude is Brad's not going to change and I'm not going to change. <laughs> Amen. Our new segment, Jerk of the Week. So apparently Brandon has a Jerk of the Week as well. Jerk of the Week. I want you guys to close your eyes. Imagine you're waiting in line at Walmart, Target, etc., and you are waiting to buy a Go Girl or a Mountain Dew Game Fuel or a Pop. There's only one checker open. The person in front of you has about 25 items. You don't take any notice to this because she's almost done. She's only got like three items left to, to check. Can I ask how old this person is? It's an elderly person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the total is shown, you hear, hold on, let me get out my checkbook. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Old lady writing checks. She doesn't start filling it out until every single item has been rung up. Mm -hmm. Of course you need the total to write the check. But you could be filling out your name, your date, your signature. You could start filling out the check, but she doesn't even have her checkbook out yet. So, that geriatric fuck is my jerk of the week. <laughs> Can I open my eyes now? I know. We're just... <laughs> you may. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, my jerk of the week uh, is very specific as well. It's a person who needs to park in a handicapped spot at a fast food restaurant. I don't think that anyone who parks in a handicapped spot needs to be going to a fast food restaurant <laughs> if they i could understand if it's you know hold on are, are you getting upset because they're taking your handicapped spot so you could spot no what pass? happened on monday is i went to mcdonald's to spot pass and instead of pulling into one of the handicapped spots uh, it was like 5 30 in the morning i pulled up just to the side of mcdonald's and blocked like two handicapped spots and i had my ds Pointed to the uh, <laughs> to the restaurant so that it could pick Hanging up faster. Out the window. Yeah, so it could pick up faster. So right when my light starts flashing green, I hear a honk behind me. I turn around and as I pull, I'm, I, I make a U turn and I see a guy pull into one of the handicap spots I was blocking and gets out of McDonald's and I just shake my head at, my head at him. I could understand if he had a broken leg maybe, but no, he was just some dude who didn't need to be eating fast food. There were Every single spot was open. He could have used the extra 10 feet to walk to the door. Uh, and even if it was a person who had a broken leg, they could have went through the drive through where it was empty. That's some rationale for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get upset for me blocking two handicapped spots when there's every single other uh, space open. And it's just that sense of entitlement they have. Like, I could park here because I can. Well, I could park there too. <laughs> Tell him Steve Day. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so you got your cool picks? Uh, I didn't do cool picks. Oh, wow. But I do have a special guest to um, that did cool picks for me. Who's that? It's Chris. <laughs> is this the GameStop employee? Yes, it is. Oh, man. Don't you need to go somewhere first? Like something, get something from your car or something? Oh, we could just let him in. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Chris, how are you doing today? I don't like how I was portrayed on the last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we don't like GameStop employees, so what do you expect? So we have the, the New Orleans versus the Seahawks. <laughs> I didn't know who to pick here, so I reached back out to Brian, or Brandon, whatever his name was, <laughs> and he said he had some insider tips. <laughs> he told me that the Seahawks are the few to survive Hurricane Katrina, and that Drew Brees has been hitting the NyQuil a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I'm going to disregard everything that he said. 
he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I think he was trying to give me misinformation. I'm going to go with the Seahawks, the Colts, and the New England Patriots. I'm going to make a safe assumption that you both are very unfamiliar with the techno sensation known as Dead Mouse. <laughs> I seen the the signs for them in Vegas. I think they play at the MGM Grand often, or he, I guess. What about you? Don't you have some Deftones records to go listen to? <laughs> <laughs> if you were even remotely familiar with Dead Mouse, you would have corrected my nomenclature in describing them as techno. They're actually progressive house. <laughs> <laughs> Moron. <laughs> <laughs> he hails from the great country up north. Do you know what country I'm speaking of? Canada? You're hecka smart. <laughs> <laughs> you do have some brain cells after watching those dastardly Smith movies. <laughs> do you know that he was also engaged to Kat Von D? Who? Dead Mouse. It's an actual person? Yes. <laughs> I know nothing of Dead Mouse. I think there's a five in the spelling of mouse somehow. Like it looks like an S or something. That is correct. It's like cool. Yeah. Jordan came home one day and was like, "Hey, Dad, do you listen to Dead Ma Five? <laughs> I thought we were doing cool picks here. <laughs> Sorry. I read on an unofficial blog written by a friend of Kat Von D's hairdresser's sister-in-law that Dead Mouse owns a cult hat. So I'm going with the Colts. <laughs> San Diego and Denver. Denver. Do you know what state that's in? Colorado. <laughs> two for two. You're heck of smart. <laughs> I'm not going to make any references to that new law that just passed recently. <laughs> for it is not my drug of choice. <laughs> I've been known to shake the gator's tail once in a blue moon. <laughs> What's shaking the gator's tail? Desomethamine. <laughs> Street name crocodile. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a synthesized form of codeine. The effects are akin to heroin, except the croc doesn't last as long. I tried H once, but it kept me nodding for eight hours. <laughs> I missed out on five World of Warcraft raids during that time. <laughs> Croc only lasts about two hours max. Chargers for the win. San Francisco against Carolina. I have mixed feelings about this matchup. My last relationship ended in Carolina. Back in June of 2000, I met a girl in an AOL chat room. <laughs> The chat was getting pre pretty heated. It was me against the world, it seemed like. I was defending my stance of Hugh Jackman not being able to make a good Wolverine in the new X-Men movie coming out in July that year. <laughs> in between the lines of righteous vulgarity that I shot out at the mobbing chat, she came to me. Angel Baby 21123 came to my defense. She sided with my totalitarian rant and invited me to a private chat. I bet it was your mom. I left the baneful wells of the angry phalanx <laughs> behind me to join her. She lived in Carolina, she told me, with her mom and took care of her grandmother. We dated for a whole week. <laughs> Things got pretty hot and heavy. We cybered. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't long before she confessed, though. Come to find out, I was dating a lie. She was only 18 at the time, not 25-year-old sex kitten she claimed to be. And she was a he. <laughs> I was trolled. He wasn't even from Carolina. He confessed his name was Jonathan Seabear. <laughs> I was... And he was gay for me. <laughs> Going with the Niners. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Chris, for your picks. Is that all of them? I bid thee farewell. All right. Oh, what I miss, guys? You missed some cool picks. <laughs> uh, wish I would have stuck around for them. And that'll do it for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, where we wouldn't mind having a Metroid as a pet. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting. <laughs>